And so where does the idea of being fasted whilst training come from? Well, essentially the insulin response. So by being fasted, your insulin levels are low and stable. Insulin blunts lipolysis, which is a part of the fat burning process. And therefore there's one application. Also, there have been studies which have shown a greater fat utilization during fasted cardio. For example, Alborg in 1976, and he showed that glucose ingestion uh, diminished lipolysis, the fat breakdown within the body. And so there is certainly research and there's certainly logic behind the idea that if you don't eat, you're going to burn up that fat. You're going to have better access to the fat and increase fat mobilization. But actually what you're going to learn as I, as I go through this video is that's just one part of the puzzle. It's almost like watching a movie, but not watching until the end. And a lot of people just take their fitness information halfway through the movie. They don't finish it to see the twist or to get a greater perspective on the question. And actually, it's not a case of who is right. This is a fairly straightforward question and it really will come down to your preference and I'll explain why. And so there is this principle that eating carbohydrates before your workout will blunt lipolysis. However, this is a key problem and this is probably the most important part of this video. When it comes to burning fat, there are several stages. I made a video on it. Please watch that on lipolysis and fat oxidation as that very easily explains these processes. But essentially what a lot of people will not tell you is that just creating a thermogenic effect is not enough. That's only one part of the fat burning process. Even if you break down triglycerides in the body, break down fat, mobilize fatty acids, those fatty acids still need to be burnt up oxidized for use as energy. And this is where the disconnect comes. And in fact, if fatty acids are not used up as energy, they, they can be returned to stored fat in the form of a triglyceride molecule. And there was a study by Horowitz et al. And what they looked at is the effect of low and moderate training intensity using fasted and fed groups. Low intensity cardio with the fed group showed a decrease in lipolysis. It, however, fat oxidation remains similar with the fasted group. So even though the group that ate showed diminished fat breakdown, in terms of the overall burning up of fat, both groups were similar until around 90 minutes of cardio. Beyond that 90 minute period, then the fasted group showed great benefits. But when it came to moderate and in intense exercise, they, there was no difference between the, the fed group and the fasted group in terms of fat oxidation, fat burning, the, the end point of this fat burning process. And so it comes down to this idea that a lot of people miss that even though you're breaking down fat, it still needs to be oxidized and converted to ATP, used up as energy. Dr. Brad Schoenfeld has some nice quotes about this and, and he says that during moderate to high intensity uh, exercise, the body continues to break down significantly more fat when fasted compared to after you've eaten. Okay, so that would support fasted cardio. But here's the kicker. And he says, unfortunately, the rate of breakdown exceeds your body's ability to use the extra fatty acids for fuel. In other words, you have a lot of fatty acids floating around in the blood that can't be used by the working muscles. Dr. Brad Schoenfeld, he's a very level-headed researcher in my opinion. He has very balanced information. He did some research into fasted and fed cardio. Now, in my opinion, this is not the best research that he's done. There are severe limitations. The outcome of his research is that he found that no significant difference in, in fat in fat burning between people that had eaten and people who were fasted. But there was there were limitations in terms of the length of, of the uh, study, which was around four weeks. Also, the participants had to self-record their calorie intake. And indeed, Dr. Brad stated that he was certain that they misrepresented how many calories they were eating. They were uh, underselling it. Uh, and, and that's a major issue in much research. When it comes to this key variable of how many calories people are eating, caloric deficit, when people have to measure that themselves in research, it can be very inaccurate, the numbers that they give. So Dr. Brad says you need to evaluate fat burning over the course of days, not on an hour to hour basis to gain a meaningful perspective on its impact on body composition. And this is absolutely vital. And this is something, this is the part of the pie that's missing when we look at fat burning. It is a mistake 
to view it in an acute manner, to just view fat burning within your cardio session. What you need to understand is that the process of fat burning, the process of the body recruiting stored energy and converting that to being used is not linear. Energy production is variable. There are many aspects to it. It's not linear. It changes. And that's how you need to understand fat burning. Even at low intensity cardio, it will burn a higher proportion of fat as fuel. We don't know exactly how much or what those ratios are. So you have to be careful in terms of viewing fat burning and energy burning, if you like, as a linear, straightforward process, because it is not. And this is also what creates much misunderstanding with steady state cardio versus hit cardio. I made a video about that too, so please watch that where I explain the misunderstanding. You can do fasted cardio. I do fasted cardio all the time, but not because it gives me a unique benefit in terms of fat loss, but because it will fit into my training and my eating schedule at certain times. I like to wake up and train in the morning, and then I feel energized for the day. I feel mentally healthy, but I will also eat when possible because I like to mix it up. And so it really comes down to this idea of personal preference. Some people feel better training in a fasted state. They feel lighter, more motivated. They That's perfectly legitimate. But what I want to be clear about is that if you are somebody that hates training fasted and you're getting out of bed and you're going through these grueling cardio sessions because you believe it gives you some unique benefit to the entire fat burning process, then that is incorrect. You, you may as well eat before you train. And in fact, the application of that is if you eat and you're doing hard intensity cardio, high intensity, you may perform better. Also, you need to consider epoch, the calories burnt post-workout. You also need to consider intensity of cardio. So essentially, you can do fasted cardio. If you enjoy fasted cardio, if that fits your lifestyle, do it. Absolutely do it. Burn the calories, be in caloric deficit and lose fat. If you hate fasted cardio, but you're doing it, stop, eat, and then also perform your cardio. Some people will comment below, but I train fasted and I've burnt fat, so it is effective. Well, yes, it is effective, but it's not the fasted state that is the significant factor. It is, the, it is that you're doing everything else correctly. You're putting all those scientific parameters of fat loss into place. Now, if you've been doing fasted cardio and losing fat, you will have been in caloric deficit. There's one factor. You'll most likely have be, been eating quality nutrients, which manipulate your hormones. There's another factor. You are doing cardio. Now, whether it's fasted or not, you are doing cardio to help create that caloric deficit. You are doing it over time, consistently over time training. So you are putting all these parameters into place that are losing fat. So don't get confused about the cause effect. But having said that, when it comes to fasted cardio, there is a massive hole in research. And that comes to lean populations, very lean people, 10% body fat below, etc. Competitive bodybuilders, fitness uh, models, etc. The effect of fasted cardio on those populations is not well researched. Look at what YouTube fitness is saying. I didn't take my information from YouTube Fitness. What I did is I typed in this question and I looked at the most visible videos on this subject to see the information that you are being given. And I just want to start by saying that the videos I chose were completely at random. I just typed in the question. I saw the most popular videos and I just took a few out of there. And so Jeff Nippard made a video and I quite liked his video. And essentially this is what he said. Just because you burn more fat within the cardio session doesn't mean you're burning fat, more fat overall. That's, I would completely agree with that. And you have to understand the, the epoch, the, the, which I've made in another video, this oxygen debt, especially with hard cardio where Post-workout, your body has to try and return the bodily systems to a level of homeostasis. And it's during the, that, that process that extra calories are burnt. And so that's very important. And he references Pauli 2011, who says that when you burn more of one substrate in a session, you burn less of it over the next 24 hours. And so if you're burning more, a higher proportion of fat within your cardio session, you're then going to burn more, more, uh, uh, carbohydrate glycogen post-workout. And that's a very interesting concept. 
that again is ignored when people are real hard proponents of fasted cardio. And then we come to Elliot Hulse, but Elliot says that it depends on the type of cardio you are doing. And that he says that he did high intensity cardio fasted and that he lost muscle mass. And essentially now he does low intensity cardio in a fasted state to preserve his muscle mass. Um, I, I would find that statement quite problematic. I'm going to make a separate video on that. And then Scott Herman. So he also mentions this, this fact that if you're doing high intensity cardio, you may need to eat before to help with your performance. Again, he explains that fasted cardio is not uniquely beneficial and he outlays uh, solid principles. And so this is also a, a fairly decent video. People will give you only half the story to, to suit their arguments. They will not look at the wider variables involved with a topic. And so I hope this video is useful for you. I've linked references down below that you can read. I'm James Linker, Shredder Sports Science. I'll see you soon.